with that uh, direct pipeline to, to the universe through Siva Bob or yeah, Siva Das. I thought to myself, this is just kind of weird, man. Like you're asking me to just like give it all to you. I don't know about that. I can't go there. I've never been able to go there, quite frankly. And maybe that's a detriment. I don't know. I just, I can't go there. So I sat there and I started to go through this meditation. And my son at that time was pretty young. And I wasn't getting a lot of sleep. So I go through this meditation. All of a sudden, I feel pretty sleepy. I'm like, hmm. You know, and it was in the church and had these church pews. So I just said, you know, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give myself the greatest gift I can right now, the gift of sleep. <laughs> so I laid down on these church pews while this guy was doing this meditation. I was in the back of the church. I, and you know what? I, could, I would have been able to just sleep there for a long time. But unfortunately, um, I was snoring. And I, w- I was having people behind me, like, you know, s- smack the church pew and wake me up. <laughs> so, you know, it was kind of an interesting moment. But that was my last my last kind of, you know, flirtation with anything guruistic, G-U-R-U. So I've always loved that saying, G-U-R-U. Okay, I'm done ranting. I hope you've enjoyed that little trip down memory lane in, in my guru connection uh, or my connection to the guru experience. I saw Sri Chinmoy once at a free concert, and I actually saw Sri Chinmoy's aura. Which is interesting. All right. Let me give out the number if you want to call in and you want to do some free readings, some some mini readings, and uh, see where this this Sagittarian energy takes us. 347-308-8995. 347-308-8995. The lines are wide open. If you want to call in and share what you're grateful for, uh, I'd be happy to bring you on the air, and you can share your gratitude. Sometimes, you know, when you share your gratitude in public with people, it can be a very empowering experience, you know. We're here to witness, you know, to be a witness to your gratitude. That's what we're here to do. And I promise I will, I will not separate you from your, from your mates and, and, uh, and demand that you be celibate. I would never do that. Nope, nope, nope. Um, it is 11.02 here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on a piece of music because I've been talking a lot. I'll put on a piece of my music, I think, since we're putting these up on YouTube now. And Google slash YouTube are, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty, they're pretty sharp when it comes to launching. Um, videos with music. So what, what can I play that would be hold on if I can find this. I, can find this. I don't know if I have but I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'm going to do because we can always edit this out. I oh, you know, haven't played this in a while. Sound vibrations. Let me play sound vibrations. Hopefully the audio will be okay. And I'll be back in uh, five minutes and four seconds. You're listening to Navigating the Astrological Matrix. On the other side, it'd be great if you want to call in. And uh, we'll do some pre- oh, you know what? Here's a, here's somebody right here. It's a 227 number, 510. Let's find out who they are, what they want to talk about. And uh, maybe they want to be, they want to share their gratitude. Let's find out who they are, and then maybe we'll go to the break after uh, the other side of this call. Here we go. Hello, you on the air with Robert? Who are you? Where are you calling from? Oh, hi. Yeah, I just called to listen in. Um, this is Camille from Alameda, California. Hey, Camille. How's it going? It's okay. Yeah, so what's happening with that, uh, that Scorpio guy of yours? You know, I don't know. Um, he kind of took off, and, um, we didn't really know, nothing really happened. And then after the fact, um, I've just heard through the grapevine that, Someone asked him about me, and um, he's interested. He just hasn't made any moves. Uh huh. Well, yeah. It's Mercury retrograde, right? Coming up. Oh yeah. So 
what does that mean? It could mean that he could come back into your life, circle back around, you know, you know, reconnect on some level. Um, right. So, so my advice to you, unsolicited, would be during the Mercury retrograde, it would be it would be cool to open up a pipeline of conversation. I wouldn't start a relationship during the Mercury retrograde. Right. So you know, don't. I would say don't. That, and, 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 and look. I think that what, what what does it mean to start a relationship? Well, I think that there are milestones, right? One of the milestones right. is intimacy. You know, once you stop talking, you can have an intimate conversation. Oh, and that's yeah. But but that's like that's it's only you know, you can always kind of in some ways you know step back a little bit. But once you once you cross the next milestone, like you know, kissing, embracing, now you're now you're moving into in this tactile world, now your cells, you know, are beginning to have kind of a, a cellular memory of what it's like to feel that person. You know, now there's different data that's being stored in your in your in your in your biology. And then the next milestone obviously is sexuality. And then the, and and and, uh, and then the next milestone after that is some form of, you know, agreements that you are now yeah. like let's do this, let's explore this. You know, if you can Keep the door open if, if he circles back during the Mercury retrograde, and get to know him more. Then oh I think yeah. Then I think it's a, a good use for Mercury retrograde, but I would not I would not uh, advocate getting into a relationship during the Mercury retrograde. Well, that makes sense, and I um, at this juncture I don't think he would. Um be interested in starting a relationship within the next two, three weeks anyway. Right. Um, yeah, it's one of those things, like, we go to the same um, pub, and I found out he'd been avoiding that pub because there was someone there who was really getting um, weird. There was a yeah. lot of tension happening between him and another patron, and that same patron always gives me grief anytime I walk in asking me questions like, um, well, have you heard from him? How's your boyfriend? And it was just getting really, uh, like, harassment. So, and he had problems with that other person for other reasons. So he avoided the place, and then he just started coming back around, let's say, this past uh, weekend, Saturday and Sunday nights. And right. someone I had I had told about him said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when I see him next, I'll remember and I'll, you know, and that's exactly what happened. And he said, well, I know someone who knows you, um, Camille, that's my friend. And apparently this the guy that I like just said, yeah, we, you know, we had some pretty, two pretty hot and heavy makeout sessions and, you know, I don't know. So it's just one of those things. Um we haven't been in touch. I haven't seen him. Nobody had seen him until this weekend. Uh-huh. Even though he just lives, ooh, maybe not even ten minutes away. Right. Yeah. Well, so I'm kind of like, well, That's yes, he is a Scorpio. Yeah, Scorpios. They they can they they go into their little cracks and crevices every now and then, you know. Like, oh like yeah. The, like you know, and Scorpions live underground. So going underground is actually really? you know, part for the force. So Camille, before I put you back in hold and let you listen, okay. which, is, which is why you're here, theoretically, um, is there anything in your life that you're grateful for you want you want to share with us? You don't have to, but this is an opportunity to be you know kind of publicly grateful for something. It's like it's kind of cool to to be able to share it and have other people witness it. And, and is there anything you want to share that you're grateful for? Um. Yeah, I'm grateful to be here right now. Um, Whatever experiences that I am witnessing, whatever life I'm living, I'm obviously meant to be here doing it. So I'm grateful for being right here. Beautiful. Being here right now. Good. All right. Excellent. Well, I'm I'm grateful that you're listening to the show, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you back on mute so you can listen some more. How's that? Oh, yes, thanks. All right, take care. Thanks. Okay, let's go. There we go. We've got a mute action. 
Um, let's go to this caller, two five zero, two five zero area code. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hey. Hey, uh, calling from Canada, Victoria, BC. Oh hi, hi. Uh, how is it up there? Um. Well, it's trying to be nice, but it's actually kind of gray. Uh, but you know, it's a beautiful place. I love it here. Um, uh, I, I just loved what you were saying about all the gurus bringing them all back down to earth. And uh, I've always had that feeling about shamans, you know, that uh, um, that's how they have their power. is a lot of sexual power. But uh, well, it's my birthday today. and well, happy, birthday. happy birthday. What's your name? My name is Linda. And uh, I'm 61 today. I, uh, I spent the moment of my birthday on top of Haleakala last year on Maui. <laughs> so um, uh, I've been moving around a lot. I, I, my ascendant is zero degrees Libra, and uh -huh. I have Pluto going through my fourth house. And I would just love it. My my uh, my IC is zero degrees Capricorn. So it seems like since uh, Pluto went into my fourth house that I, I'm. I don't have a home. I'm just, you know, I'm packing up right now to go to another house sitting job. And um, I really, having a Taurus moon, I really wish that I could have a home. <laughs> so I'd yeah. like to hear what you think about Pluto in the fourth house and if it could be uh, worked out in other ways. So, well, not only is Pluto in the fourth house, but it's been squaring your ascendant, obviously. Yeah and, yeah. and you know that is, I tell you, the the when you have one of the outer planets squaring the ascendant, it, it can be really challenging, um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. because it's really you know it it just it torques on the identity, and I've I've been having Neptune squaring my ascendant all year, mm. and one of the things that I did during this Neptune squares, and I don't know where you were earlier in the show, as I, as I stopped drinking uh, about in July. And that's really helped me with that Neptune square. You know, it's helped me get clearer on my identity, uh, the ability to be uh, more spiritual and less engaged. More involved with spirit and less involved with spirits has been really amplified. And my ability to, to, to be really lucid and, you know, be available for people and, and read has just, you know, gone through the roof. So right, right. one of the things that you, that you would want to look at, well, how does, you know, how does, how does Pluto at a hard angle, you know, you know challenge your ascending and what, what things can you do in order to, to make those changes in your life? Now, it, when you have a Libra ascendant, one of the things that that's, I've always found interesting with Libra Ascendance or Libra uh, First House is that you can't, it's almost like you can't do anything unless it, uh, it includes somebody else. You know, because Libra is always defining itself against or with the other. Right, so, right. So for you with Pluto squaring the Ascendant, it's, maybe it's about, you know, moving yourself out of the sphere of having a one-on-one -on -one relationship you know, reclaiming your power, um, you know, bringing it, you know, I, when I think of the fourth house, you know, it's not just for me a, a physical location. Uh, it's also a kind of a metaphysical location. And, and it's, you know, really centering your personal power at the, at the most primary part of your chart. So it, in a lot of ways, it's pulling away from relationships. Right on. Yes, yes. I have been doing some major house cleaning in the relationship area, I guess, yeah. intuitively. So, yeah. you know, so then you would look at patterns. How do you give your power away in relationship? And, uh. and, 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 you know, when – and here's the, here's the tricky part, right? So 